Continuing with our discussion of factors affecting speech quality, we've covered the coding technique, compression, and the mean opinion score resulting from that. We've covered delay and the total delay, which can cause echoes and problems with deciding who gets to talk next. Variability in delay called jitter that's going to cause clicks on the line. Another thing that would affect the quality of the reconstructed analog would be losing packets. In other words, losing chunks of 20 milliseconds worth of speech. Now, how exactly do we lose a packet? One way of losing a packet would be noise, where the noise is so bad that it causes bits to change from zero to one, and then these protocol data units are gonna fail their error check when they arrive at the far end, or even at an intermediate box, and they just get thrown away. They just disappear when they get corrupted. And as we said, when we're talking about live voice conversations, there's no time to retransmit stuff. So when something gets corrupted, just throw it away and it does not get retransmitted. As we move to better and better quality underlying networks like LANs, which are all digital, and fiber optics, which does not have added radio frequency interference noise on it, the problem of noise causing us to lose chunks of data is becoming less and less of an issue. But there are other mechanisms for losing packets and one of them has to do with buffers. If we think back to our example of the gigabit ethernet switch, we had what we were thinking of as four inputs and one output. So it was like a wiring closet switch concentrator thing, if you want to think of it in that direction. Now we're going to have a problem if all four of those inputs have people doing massive file transfers or video on them. They're constantly transmitting at a gigabit per second into the switch because there's only one one gigabit per second output. So input equals four times output. No, we're going to have a problem there. Now. A lot of the time this is not a problem because we aren't constantly transmitting one gigabit per second. We're sending a few bytes every once in a while at one gigabit per second on each of the inputs. And so this concentrator can pick and choose and take them to send a few bytes slightly more often on the output is the way it would actually work. But in a gigabit ethernet LAN, the vast, vast majority of the time what's happening on the wires is nothing. And then every once in a while you transmit some data at a gigabit per second. But having gigabit output is not normal in 2007. We aren't quite there yet. When we're talking about wide area networks, usually the output rate is a lot less than a billion bits per second. You might be lucky to have 10 megabits per second. You might have one megabit per second. So we've got a LAN running in the gigabit per second speeds and the WAN is running in the megabit per second speeds. Here is where we start to have problems. And we can lose packets due to the fact that the demand is greater than the supply. This animation shows a simplified, easy example of how we could lose a packet inside a network device due to buffer overwriting. And what we're showing is we've got the input, so this is the thing that's writing into the buffer, and we've got the output. This is the processor inside this switch or router pulling stuff out of the buffer to process it and transmit it. And in this example, what we're showing is that the incoming, this is writing into the buffer, is happening twice as fast as the outgoing. And so if you follow this along, you'll see that we write chunk of data number one into the buffer, then number two, then we read number one out of the buffer, then we write three and four, and then we read number two, write five and six, read number three, write seven and eight, read number four, write number nine and 10 and whoops, 
what happened to five because that's the next one that we want to read well number five just got overwritten in that physical piece of memory by number ten and when it gets overwritten like that poof gone never to be heard from ever again it just disappeared so this is how we lose packets due to congestion is actually overwriting them in buffers and if you think about it, what's going to happen next is that then we will transmit 10, 11, 12, 13, and then probably we'll have another buffer overwriting problem. This is a simple example. Hopefully things aren't that bad. The thing to keep in mind is that we're not constantly transmitting. We send things in bursts, and that's why we need buffering and also why we don't have huge problems with things getting lost all the time is because we have bursty traffic and as long as we can temporarily store some stuff in a buffer then when the burst subsides everything goes back to a nice normal steady state another way that packets disappear is because of policing of traffic on a WAN and we're certainly going to discuss this in the next part but just to give you the short answer policing means throwing your data away when you try to transmit more than you signed up for. And so this would cause packets to just disappear. Another way that we could get buffer overwriting would be not just in buffers in network elements in the WAN when things start getting congested, but also at the jitter buffer at the far end. If our jitter buffer is too small, then we're gonna start overwriting stuff at the jitter buffer. Losing packets is going to cause radical degradations in sound quality. Remember we said that jitter, if we did not correct it, that would mean that we'd have something on the line and then if the delay was longer for the next packet we would put nothing on the line for a little while and then back to something and that's a click. Well here if we lose a packet that's 20 milliseconds worth of speech. If we did nothing then there would be nothing on the output for 20 milliseconds and back to something. You can be sure that that would sound like a click in the user's brain. And if we started having these things happen fairly often they would start complaining about the poor quality of this system. It's always clicking and buzzing at me. I can't understand what the other person's saying. <laughs> On some of these codecs, we can use packet loss concealment as a feature. And that's a fancy way of saying interpolation. Interpolation, well, this is when we have data here that has a value saying it's here. We have data with a value here, but we're missing the piece of data in the middle. Well, brute force interpolation is to draw a straight line between the two and say, okay, well, that must have been the value, so we'll just make that up and send it on its way. This is not very good. Uh, what we usually like to do is to take multiple values on either side of the piece that's missing and fit a curve to them, and then we get a more accurate estimate of the piece that was missing. And uh, if you've ever changed the number of pixels in an image using a program like Photoshop and it has a resampling and you can choose is it like nearest neighbor or linear or bicubic. You want to use bicubic because what you're doing is using three pixels on either side to generate the one in the middle and this is called interpolation. We do the same thing with codecs. So this can smooth out and not put nothing on the line but actually fix it, what does it cost us? A little bit of delay. 